Hi, in this video I want to show you how to get started with React and GraphQL by building a simple Instagram clone. On the front end we'll use React and Apollo, which is a flexible GraphQL client that implements features like networking and caching. And for the back end we'll use a GraphQL API provided by GraphQL. Alright, so let's get started. Here is what the final application will look like. So we have a collection of posts and users can create new posts or delete existing ones. And as the basis for this application, we're going to use the quick start with Apollo example that you find in the GraphQL examples GitHub organization. The first thing we have to do is to actually go and clone the repository. So let's simply copy the clone command from down here, paste it in the terminal, and then navigate into the quick start with Apollo example directory. Perfect. The next step is to create our GraphQL backend. And the way how we're going to do this is by using the GraphQL CLI that you can install using NPM. So I'm going ahead and pasting that in my terminal to install the GraphQL CLI. And the next step is going to be to use the GraphQL init command to create a new GraphQL project. And the way how we do this is by passing a schema and that schema contains the data model of our application and in our case, the data model only has one type that is called post with these two fields here, the description and the image URL of the post that we are creating. So to create our GraphQL backend, we have to copy the GraphQL init command and paste it into the terminal where the GraphQL CLI has been installed. And this is first going to open up a browser again where we need to authenticate with the GraphQL console. We can simply log in using GitHub And now you, we can go back to the terminal where the project is being created. Nice. So next I want to explore the capabilities of my GraphQL API in a playground. All I have to do for that is type the GraphQL playground command into the terminal and it's going to open up a playground in the browser. And a playground is basically an interactive env environment that lets you explore the capabilities of your GraphQL API in an interactive manner. I can now go and write my queries right here in the GraphQL playground. And the first query that I'm going to write is for asking for all the posts that we currently have in the database and their description. The server only returns an empty array at the moment because we don't have any posts in our database yet. So let's change that and create some initial data. Here I have prepared the first mutation that we're going to send. So we provide a description and an image URL for the post that we're creating. Let's send the mutation and we're getting the ID in return because that's we specified right here in the payload. In the payload. I also prepared a second mutation that we can send right away. And if we now go back to the all posts query, we'll see that it returns the two posts that we just created. Fantastic. We're now completely done with our backend and can move on to implement the front end. Let's go ahead and check out the next step in the readme. So we next have to go and take the endpoint for our GraphQL API and paste it into the index.js file when we're creating the network interface. So how do we get this GraphQL endpoint? We've basically got two ways of doing so. You can either go to the GraphQL console and simply click the endpoints button down here. And the second way would be to use the GraphQL endpoints command in a terminal, which is also going to display all the playgrounds, uh, all the endpoints for this particular project. Now we have to copy the endpoint into the index.js file, replacing this placeholder right here. And now we can go back to the terminal and call yarn install to install all the dependencies of the project. Once that is finished, we can simply run the application by calling yarn start. And this will simply open up the app in a browser where we can now go and add new images. or go ahead and delete existing ones. 
That's it for this video. If you have any questions, check out our documentation or join our growing community on Slack.